Big Big Train Live in the Real World is about us performing some of our uh, better known songs, shall we say, and uh, in, a, in a live context. So it's live in the studio. It's a bit like a Pinocchio thing, you know, with this project. Big Big Train, so we've suddenly become a, 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 real boy, a real boy, you know. That's the kind of, that's the sort of way we're looking at it. So, Big Big Train in the Real World. Right, at the moment we're in a slightly chaotic half an hour of bringing all the stuff in and deciding exactly where we're going to be setting up. Um, so that's a discussion amongst the band to decide exactly where it's going to work best, both audio-wise and visual-wise as well for the camera. So hopefully we'll know what we're doing in half an hour's time. On either side, doesn't really matter. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the centre, but I think it'd be... I'd, just on the inside of the street, okay. maybe here. Don't know. Advice? Oh, you're looking at me for this one? Yes. You've done yes. A few but, yeah, it doesn't need to be far away, but if you want them there, then you are restricted on one. Well, I'm just thinking if... if <laughs> I'm just thinking if David is... Um, I could set up... I mean, I could easily fit on the, this side of the pole, maybe take up this area here, as far as the drums are concerned. That looks sensible to me. If we put Nick there, perhaps I'll go there. Um, okay, guitars, yeah. keyboards, um, Rachel, Rachel, and I would Greg. say keyboard side. Um, and then when the brass come. Right, give me a second. I just want to. Um, I want to show Dave something. That's amazing. But it's based on something, an artwork called The Permanent Way. The artist took that template and, uh, and adapted it to this. That's fantastic. That's good. So we need to find somewhere to hang it, don't we? Yes. I think we can figure something out, yeah. I'm just rigging up all the uh, in-ear monitors for everybody. I, I thought there were nine players, but there's actually only eight players in, in the band. So I'm a bit confused, because I've made up more cables than I need to. <laughs> So we were here promptly at... Um... Actually, you weren't here promptly at 10. I was, I, was, I was here promptly at quarter past 10. I was here promptly at 14 and, past uh, 10 and was able then to say that... Uh, David has rocked up at... At the time, a, a relaxed the, that, was, that was the time slot I'd, I'd asked for when you yeah, rejected last no, night. I said, no, is that no. all right if I just... But we are nowhere near making any music, so he's done the, he's done the correct thing. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing in there. No, let's, go and, let's go and get them. Let's go and get our singer. Then we, we can actually, we've got, um, over the other side, okay. we've got um, a big car park and then you just cut across the road, okay. so you could just put it out there, you know, okay. safe. Okay, I thought that you actually know, said that wasn't who's part of this. Yeah. I think. If I need it moved, I'll come Hey, David! I'm doing it. Hey, right, what's it? Yeah. What's that? You've your entourage. <laughs> 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 I've got it right? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Hey, Jim, how you doing? All right. <laughs> I've done you it. all right? Really? Good to see you. Excited. Yeah, yeah, good. How are you? Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. It's a bit strange. <laughs> yeah. I've just um, uh, told uh, um, um, but oh, I'll just pop really badly. Yeah. Okay. So it's Oh, 
you know, nearly got you 200, 250 quid shot for, for Harry Hill then. <laughs> Greg had the idea that, that really uh, our music was a bit too complicated to jump straight into doing some live gigs, so we go somewhere nice, do some rehearsals, see whether the arrangements worked, and, uh, and then we thought, well, we might as well uh, video it as well and, and release some performances on DVD. So um, it's, a, it's a really lovely place. Uh, it started by, it was built by, or converted by Peter Gabriel with the intention of being somewhere that was a lot more of a natural environment than most studios are to work in. So let's go in and have a look. Um, car park over there. Not that interesting. But mm -hmm. So this is, um, I guess, part of the original mill building called, and they call it the wood room, uh, for obvious reasons, lots of wood, um, nice acoustic, uh, a nice uh, Bosendorfer grand piano over there. And we are going to be recording uh, one unplugged number here in a few days' time. Our lead singer, David. How are you feeling, David? Oh, all right, good. And our bass player, Greg, who's trying to avoid the camera, not very successfully. Follow me. Let's go through to the main studio. Coming into the main studio, which they call uh, the big room for obvious reasons. I think, the, as I understand it, the main philosophy behind this is A, to, for, to have a studio, a recording space with sort of natural light and looking out on the on nature and on the, on, on the pond there, rather than, than kind of hermetically sealed, womb-like environment that studios usually are. Um, and also just have a space where rather than everyone being playing in their separate little cubicles or isolation booths, somewhere where, where musicians could work with enough room that musicians could work in the same room and communicate stuff. So I'm um, coming down here. This is a rather uh, wonderful SSL desk. I don't know anything about this. You'll have to ask Rob about that. Um, some lovely vintage instruments here. There's a, there's a Hammond over there. Let's see what Greg's up to. Hello. These look suspiciously like bass pedals, Greg. Yes, indeed. Tell us about these. <laughs> okay, well, these are called Roland PK5s. Uh, so these are MIDI pedals, so they don't generate their own sound, um, which is why we've got a Moog MIDI tool here, which generates the Moog Taurus bass pedal sound that we need. Um, these will be connected together by MIDI, and that will generate a very nice, warm... Big bottom. A big bottom. A big bottom, yes, when yes, you need it. Yeah. Yes, you can put your foot good. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, drum kit over here. Not sure where Nick is, but uh, I, I, and our specially commissioned uh, bass drum head there, very nice. Mr. Dave Gregory, who it, it looks like he's, he's agonised and managed to cut down the guitars he's going to use here to a mere seven. seven. Together. <laughs> but you know, you've got to be uh, a bit frugal. You do. You do, you do. Well, I congratulate you on your self-restraint. <laughs> uh, they look lovely, actually. Like that. Well, they look lovely. I hope we get a few nice shots, you know. But, uh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Richard Sherblum. Oh, yes. Who is, who is very no, kindly he's got it. being Renaissance man. He's going to play keyboards and guitar and do some backing vocals. Yeah. So, uh, and have yeah. lots of fun. And have lots With of fun, it, yeah. yeah. Mr. Andy Paul. Hello. <laughs> Are you all set up? Have you got anything more to do? There. Yeah. So it's we... taken the best part of the day to set up. There's so much gear. But we're nearly there. We're looking forward to it. We are going to... Uh, today is just uh, setting up. Tomorrow we start in earnest. And uh, it's really very, very exciting because the band hasn't gigged for 10 years and, and um, really has sort of been a studio-only project for a long time. So... Uh, it's all quite exciting and quite frightening. <laughs>
Like giant's fingers close From the hills to the emptiness beneath To the depths of the mist Morning light, midwinter sun
Okay, we're just about to do Judas and Repentance, start working on Judas and Repentance. Because we've got this beautiful organ here, we thought that Hammond in the studio, we thought so we'd try and hook it up so that Rico can play it on the thing. Something's happened. What's happened? Can't do that. Uh, it's organ failure all over. <laughs> do we need to do an operation? <laughs> yeah. For the, for the organ failure. We tried. It wouldn't work. <laughs> the operation was unsuccessful? Oh, yeah. Ah, damn. It was all right before. Not all the gear can work. Oh, oh thank you. Mm. That thank was you. a good one. <laughs> These are the I like it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be here all week. Yeah. Literally. <laughs>
whisper Samuel Palmer proven to be his undoing And so he confesses then he's arrested charging with conspiracy to defraud is a just king and free Oh, 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 oh,
This is day three on our time here at Real World and today we're going to be tackling the under four yard. We've got the brass guys in, they've been uh, travelling here this morning and uh, we're, they're rehearsing now in the wood room. We did a day of recording yesterday, uh, so we're the, the the band are kind of all set to go, and um, we're going to put the brass with the band to do these sections. It's, the under four yard is a, a scary 23 minute yeah. or something like yeah. that at yeah. its, its, uh, its uh, full length. Um, that means we're probably possibly going to do it in two sections. There's a section called the 12 stones section uh, in the middle, so we'll probably end it at that point and then go on from mm. there because it just makes it a little bit more manageable while we're recording it. It's very exciting hearing the brass go through the, um, yeah, the parts, yeah. real lump in the throat stuff. Yeah. Very What's emotional. also good is that the Underfall Yard is a song mainly about his about Kingdom Brunel. And uh, just behind you over here um, is the Great Western Main Line, um, which, is, which is built by Brunel. And in fact, the song is broadly about, or much of it is about, the building of Box Tunnel. Um, and we are in the village of Box now. So very close to here is the tunnel that uh, Brunel had to tunnel through. I think at the time it was the longest railway tunnel in the world. Um, something like 100 people died during the making of it. So it was a serious endeavour. Um, and it's nice to be able to do it, you know, almost on the spot, really. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's a car. <laughs> <laughs> Hark! Oh, it's a Citroen. <laughs> it's a high-speed Citroen. Oh. <laughs>
the still gray skies he is drawn across the river no bands played there was no sound the sunlight at the dark of the full earth it is gone now it is over
Wings, lady Good. Yeah, the thrush as well. When I'm doing the thrush, it's like, um, song thrush. It's very much a thrush rather than thrush. Song thrush. Yeah. Okay, if that helps. Oh, do you want to? I promise I can't unplug mine. So, sorry. Can you play on the thrush string? It's awkward. Intensity of light. Some of the moments when we're, you know, when we're in the big room, kind of just looking, looking across at people and just them actually being there because all of this has been done um, sort of without seeing each other. So, you know, that's kind of one of the best things is just to be in the same room and see each other playing yeah. the parts that you've been hearing. <laughs>
extract from one of the album songs. Oh. Greg Sporton has these, uh, he writes these parts, finger style, mm -hmm. that I have to adapt to, to use with a pick. Ah. They're very difficult. Because <laughs> they're all sort of upstrokey things that I'm not very good at. Because I don't practice hard enough. <laughs> That's all it is. guitar by the way. It's a Fender Mustang in Lake Placid Blue, made in 1966. And it's always here, whenever I come to this studio, it's always just lying around, neglected. Do you end up retuning it every time? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've picked it up, actually. <laughs> no. I've just been explaining to the camera that it's not part of my collection. Do you it, have looks, one? it needs looking after, really. It could do with some TLC. 
But nice colour, I always like this colour. It's been quite stressful because this is the first time any of us have played together. In fact, in some cases, actually met each other because we haven't... Uh, it's still, you know, Rickard is um, a stranger yeah. and uh, he's a nice guy so far. He's, he's good as gold. <laughs> I think I, I've been in the same sort of concert venues as some of the guys once back in like 2008. But that's, uh, you know, we didn't know of each other back then. So It's been uh, Greg's end affair. He's done most of his writing on this one. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. You take a risk, you know, when you bring people in, uh, particularly when you've never met them. It's recommended by Rob Aubrey, who of course is our genial sound engineer and back totem. And he, uh, Rob's very rarely wrong uh, when it comes to choosing musicians. I think he brought David in, didn't he, originally? Yeah. He's and, and uh, Nick. Yeah. Yes. And Nick as well. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a man to be trusted, whose judgment is to be trusted. better than mine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. He's so reliable and just yeah. a thoroughly nice guy. Yeah. And I couldn't have wished for a better a better co pilot I maybe said co pilot, that's not quite the right word. Co train but, uh, co yeah, so another co driver of the another train. engineer. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, he's just brilliant yeah. and uh, so easy to work with. I was one of the first ones to come to England. Really? In to count to nine, oh. <laughs> almost nine. nine. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, I do the slow version, I, I, you know, like I do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like that instead. Yes. It, it, it just felt better because the, the metronome is doing that. So, it's might as well get used to, to it. Really it is. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> well, I love it at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is nice. It's just, uh, it's just an amazing experience to be able to do this in this room mm -hmm. because uh, it is the most extraordinary sound environment. And uh, you know, even if we, if we fail miserably, we'll have had fun trying. <laughs> but I think this is going to be a very, uh, the result of this little weekend will uh, determine what future the band might have as a performing entity. That's the most, that's what I'm looking forward to finding out, really. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, all good. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Fog hampered 
the search Now great shark diamonds fill the skies At the deep Lost in low light And ocean tides
one of the big expectations was just being able to play with these beautiful people in the same room at the same time. Whenever all of these recordings we've made, you know, I show up at the studio, they bring the demos, I play the drum tracks, they go home, they add their bits and bobs to it, we kind of pile stuff on, next thing you know, there's a record six months or a year later. And we've never played together one note as a band in the same room until we got here to Real World. So I was you know, curious how it was all gonna come together and it was basically just like I expected it, fantastic. Um, and the more we played, the better it got and the more groovy it got and the more comfortable we got as a group and a unit. And um, it's just been a fantastic experience because we're at this beautiful place, nice big room, spacious, getting spoiled here by the staff and, and everybody and so it's, it's been a fantastic really, uh, few days and we've I think we've really discovered what we can do as a unit you know um, we already know what we can do as, as a collective as our individuals in the studio and all that stuff but now we know that we can really pull this stuff off as a, as a live thing. Yeah, it was always a question mark. Lo you know, logistics, getting it together, all of that. Um, it was always, uh, is it is it feasible? Have we got to, because this stuff is expensive. It's not, it's not, you know, we're, Big Big Train is a big, big band and it's big, big money for us to do it. And it takes all our, um, our resources to, to fund these sorts of things. But, you know, the, the, the ethos is if we make something that's amazing, then, you know, if that, will, if that, that is in itself is its own reward. And, you know, people respond to that. Um, yeah, it's been good. It felt like it went sort of the, the, the best way possible. I mean, the, the, the outcome has been fantastic. I mean, we ha haven't actually listened back to, to any of the material. <laughs> yes. We've got like some <laughs> short sections, but I mean, uh, I think the end result will be good. It, the, the general vibe has been great, actually. And everyone's been super friendly and, uh, you know, playing it together has been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah! <laughs> um, I don't want it to sound like a cliche, but I think there is a certain chemistry which has been discovered here. Um, we, we knew we had the ingredients. Uh, this band has, has, has been formed, and Greg and I as, as original members. Uh, this has been a long-term project, ambition, uh, way of life for us. Uh, and for us to come together here with all these not disparate ingredients, but complementary ingredients, and then to put those together and to find that they make a very moving, and for me, a sensational whole has been incredibly inspiring. And in this setting, I, I, you, know, you, can't, you can't ask for more than that. Yeah, no, I, I'm really, really, uh very excited now at the prospect of us actually going out and uh, delivering this music to the, into, the, into the public arena, releasing it into the community. <laughs> This song is about a pagan celebration. It's got a lot to do with apples.
fast and strong
You're welcome, sir. <laughs> There's no need for that. This is a sensitive song I'll have, you know, so. He's waiting. She likes to walk down the lanes to the fields in the woods. She finds a stream, the water feels cold in the cup of her hand. Of 
the wings against the creek The first thing that she saw And the last she hopes to see This is the last song of the first set, and I know. Boo. Okay, we're going to finish with a song that's about the barriers sometimes people put up between themselves. This is called Victorian Brick Work. the boys call them now time to bring them home they will call if they want to
stories of the great ones Lights might bring them home But every day they push the boats out But not this day Search. Now great shark diamonds fill the sky And the deep Lost in low light And ocean tide
Okay, we've reached the last song. Yes, yes, my friends, the last song was set. <laughs> 77 years ago, about 100 yards away from here. Joe and Tommy set out on a great adventure, and this is their story. This is called East Coast Racer. <laughs> 